we go with the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Welcome to your first ever look at F1 Manager 2022 gameplay. And it's lights out and away we go. And yes, you're not seeing things. This is actually how the game looks. It looks unbelievable. For a management game, the visuals on this are insane. What's up guys, Ara here, and welcome to such a highly anticipated video, especially on this channel, because I've been, you know, bringing you guys news videos about this game throughout, you know, its first announcement, all the way through little teases, little screenshots, but we finally got our first full kind of gameplay to show you from a race here at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Now, I recently went over to Frontiers HQ last week to play this, this race, essentially, that we're seeing uh, at the HQ and then they've sent me over this kind of generic b-roll footage to showcase to you guys what it's all about whilst I talk about my own personal experience of playing this game but let's get the first thing out of the way the big news about the release date of this game this game is coming out on the 25th of August later this summer I for one think the perfect time to release the game and from what I've played and what you're going to see today I think a lot of you are going to be big fans of this upcoming game it runs on the unreal engine so the visuals yeah they are really really sick you've got the authentic onboard cameras as well so you can watch your own drivers watch other drivers watch an entire race on this game from onboard cameras so if you thought oh it's gonna be a management game there's gonna be a lot of menus it's not gonna be very visually appealing you're wrong you can literally play through an entire race and it's like you're you're looking at the tv cameras uh, from real life. It's unreal. And one other thing to add on. They've got real life team radio snippets. They've got real audio from all the engineers and the drivers. Just listen. No more DRS. Copy that. So that was Ocon's actual engineer and his actual voice taken and put into the game. Okay, recharge on, recharge on. Copy that. And it's like that for every single driver and engineer in the game. Frontier have had access to, you know, I'm sure hours of audio that F1 themselves have recorded and obviously stored. And they've gone in and they've got an audio guy to go through, pick out every single little kind of sentence, phrase they need for each actionable team radio shot. which just adds into this whole aspect of they wanted this, Frontier wanted this to be the most authentic feeling game ever in terms of the broadcast styles, the visuals, the audio. And then you've got, obviously, the added-on goodies of it being just a good game to play, a good management game to play, which obviously is Frontier's bread and butter. They're some of the greatest developers when it comes to that kind of game. But that was just a little taster of some race gameplay. I'll be showing some more later on in the video. But let's look through now the new calendar system in the game there. You click the top right to kind of go on and continue, and that will always take you to the next important task you need to action. And that's also going to be, a lot of the time, is going to be taking you to the email system where you'll get all the prep from your engineers down to you know new parts design scouting board member updates and whatever so right now we're looking at the screen for the race preparation so before every single race you'll go to the race weekend preparation and this will include overviews of the circuit obviously the real life data that they've got you know looking at the different sectors the sections by speed so that may help inform you know you can see a lot of purple there so straight sections indicating you need kind of good top end speed low drag so that will inform you potentially ahead of time if you looked ahead on the calendar to okay I might want to plan a part in accordance with this it also gives you expected strategies uh, previous race records and you know likelihood of safety cars virtual safety cars and such like that so that's all data they've got from real life to help inform the way you may plan out your race of course like every other race in Formula One things go differently but of course you've got to try and plan as best you can and be the best manager you can You've also got performance targets for qualifying, race, and then general add-ons you can add on. And obviously that will get you potential cash rewards. Or can also incur some losses if you go for too much of a, a lofty performance target, let's say. And try and bite off more than you can chew. So this race preparation era is the go-to bit just before you get into the race weekend. Speaking of, let's dive back into that and show you some more gameplay of it. Hello from Baku, where we're looking forward to a weekend of racing among the medieval and the modern here at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Drivers will be battling it out on the streets of the Baku city circuit, a real contradiction of a track. From the long main straight, where the less drag the better, 
to the tight turns where downforce is a necessity. Teams are going to have to work hard to get that balance right. We're about halfway through the season now and there's still plenty of time for everything to change. All eyes are on the teams and how they tackle the rest of the year. There's nothing like a race weekend in Formula One. So some really awesome cutscenes and vistas meet you every time you load into a race weekend. They, uh, for work in progress, they look really, really awesome. So in this example of gameplay, though, we are simulating through into the race. This is footage I've been sent from Frontier. So at the moment, they didn't want us to kind of, you know, get too bogged down with the nitty gritty of practice and quality. But of course, when it comes to actually playing this game for real, when it comes out, I think you're going to want to get into the nitty gritty of practice and quality to learn about the strategy, try and build a kind of strategy out for the race then but let's jump into the race race day has arrived and the time has come for these drivers to fight it out wheel to wheel alpine demonstrated a lot of grit during qualifying here and will be hoping that the hard work pays off when it comes to the race it was a good result for alfa romeo in qualifying hopefully they can keep up that momentum for the race and the race will be taking place under blue skies. That means the team should be able to apply their strategies without any added complications. Well, whatever happens, it's sure to be a tremendous race day here at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So going into the race, having simulated practice and quality, we'll be given some example strategies that we may want to choose for our drivers. Of course, if you do practice and quality, the strategies will be informed by the data you've collected, the things you've done in practice. And obviously then with how quality went for you, you might want to change your strategy and tactics of how you're going to approach the race. Let's say if you didn't get into Q3, for example. And this whole time, you've got to remember as well, guys that this is a game that's going to be played on consoles and PC. It will be available on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. So it's, it's a game that, you know, a management game typically might be quite data heavy and a bit daunting. But from playing the game and speaking to developers, they've tried their best to keep it open. So if you don't want to do that stuff, you can simulate it and you can, you know, tease your way into the world of Formula 1 and this management game. And if you're like me, if you're an F1 nerd, you can dive all into it and get stuck in. So if we just replay through that little scene there, we can see the strategy. We've kind of seen this before in the screenshots we talked about. If you can adjust the strategy very easily with the different tire, um, you know, the stints you're doing, the window you've got, you can then also action the amount of fuel you're going to start with. So like in real life, maybe underfuel the car. If you think it's going to be a race that might have a safety car or your car is just more fuel efficient potentially and check the confidence of the drivers in terms of the race setup. Uh, that will be informed by practice and quality so you know if you do delve into it you'll obviously get a driver that's more confident with this setup they've got and uh, you know with what they're doing and then obviously you've got the car parts just to check everything's all good no knocks or scrapes in qualifying thankfully you know hopefully uh, but you do have some spare parts as well that if you do have available you can obviously use the drivers have now taken position on the grid and it's looking like a cloudy day let's take a look at the Alpine they might not be in the top three spots, but things could change fast once the race gets underway. Further back, we've got Esteban Ocon. They'll be starting the race from the bottom half of the grid, so there's a fair bit of ground to make up. And we're just moments away now. Here we go with the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And it's lights out. And away we go! So now we're back at the race gameplay we actually kicked off this video with, but now I'm gonna actually talk about the details of the screen uh, that you're looking at, basically. So let's go through from, from left to right, I guess. On the left-hand side, you've got the ladder, and that's the authentic, you know, very much similar to what we have in real life, but of course, scale down a little bit to fit everything on screen. But you can see we've got the intervals between the drivers. We can also swap that for different data points, so things like sector times, so you can see the mini sectors, gap to gap, so you can also see tire data in terms of, you know, what tire compound everyone is on, so you can just get a kind of better view of the entire race. If you look to the right hand side, you've got the race view, but you've got those little icons either side of the race view. So that will actually open up some more intricate data screens. So whilst the race is still going on, this is, 
you can look at data and that may help inform you in terms of your strategy. So kind of like almost like a real engineers have on their pit wall. That's the kind of screen you can be looking at from the top right view. And then you can see little small tiny bits like, you know, two minutes to potentially 40% chance of rain. Right now at the moment though, it is dry. You can see the millimeters of rain, potentially the track rubber and the track grip around the circuit. And then you've got obviously left and right, the two different drivers. Ocon Alonso in this example, you've got pace fuel and ERS and these are the three uh, quick options that you can select uh, how you want to manage your driver so are they going to use overtake mode on the ERS or harvest a bit more for later on the lap fuel as well should they be looking to lift and coast or can they go ahead and burn a bit more fuel and then the general pace of the car of how they're driving or are they protecting the tires so it's so quite a decent spread of ways we can manage the driver lap to lap we also have these team commands don't for our teammate and also hold up cars behind us. So let's say in this example, we've just let uh, Ocon through, it seems. So now we can tell Alonso to actually back up cars behind us to help uh, Ocon get away and kind of be, you know, kind of almost, almost like what Alonso did at Monaco and block the cars behind and, and defend like a line. But that might help Ocon then get away on a different strategy, for example. But obviously in this way, uh, Ocon, I believe, is on the softs and uh, Alonso maybe as well. But um, in terms of maybe the worry that I can already maybe see people getting out of it's kind of micromanaging lap to lap I don't believe it is I think from what I played I was able to kind of just leave the driver on the kind of you know neutral setting for ERS let's say and then when I was kind of getting annoyed you know and maybe frustrated okay I really need him to get past that's when I intervene and pull on overtake mode and a lot of the time also if you leave on auto your engineer the engineers of the drivers will pop up and the game will slow down the time let's say if you sped it up fast it will slow it down just to inform you that, okay, the engineer is suggesting maybe save fuel or he's suggesting we've got more ERS battery to use a bit more on this lap or that he could push a bit harder on the tyre. So you'll also be informed by your engineer as if they're a different person to you. Obviously, ultimately, you have the, the final say, but your engineers will try their best to lend you a hand. We've spoken about the visuals being really cool, but there's actually even replays in this race. So in the middle of it, you can watch action you may have missed. It's going to be maybe focused more on your driver, but also you can see just general overtakes that if you miss, you can watch in replay, in in game replays of, of what's happening. So you can, you know, maybe try and not miss the action and almost probably do a better job of keeping up with the action than the real life TV directors do sometimes in real life. When you speed up the game more than uh, two times, it then goes to the map view. So the kind of, you know, classic manager view you maybe expect. So you can see everyone in dots, but I found it really easy and intuitive to kind of jump in and out you know if there's a lull in a race you know you just need to try and protect the tires in a stint you might want to go to this view speed it up and then jump back into the action when I can see clearly that my driver is getting close up into some traffic or a fight and then from this screen you can still manage the ERS fuel and pace all from here and also from the from the left hand side you can see the four icons are underneath their position counters those will also go into the tire stints so you can see how the tire is wearing out or the, how the pace is on a little graph and you can judge then when you want to call them in on the pit stops, which is something you have to do manually. It's not just automatically done for you. You have to make the ultimate call of when you call them in and, you know, what tyre they're going on. You can deviate from the strategy you've already chosen or go, or, or go with the one you pre-planned. Now, we cut back to the main hub menus of the game. We're going to talk a little bit about and show you the kind of financial aspects of everything because, of course, in real-life Formula 1, the cost cap is a massive thing and they're very unapolog unapologetically nerdy when it comes to actually breaking breaking down the figures and you can, you know, really delve into it and see, you know, where the hell are we losing all this money or where are we gaining it? And you can try and plan for the future month to month, uh, like I said, or year to year, you know, about, you know, what parts, what big developments you want to do and you need to try and keep on top of it. And of course, that includes manufacturing and designing new parts, which you'll kind of see in the email system. But you can see there you've got the kind of car section where you'll be able to manage the different parts you have because in the car section, you have like a way warehouse of all your previous parts and then from there you install them onto the current car and you have denotions of I've got side pod one or side pod two and so side pod two obviously you'd hope would be the better one the one you've designed to be better for top end speed or acceleration or you know the you know the, the, 
the, the dirt, yeah, for example. Design and manufacture are two different things in the game as well. So you will design your parts and then you actually have to manufacture them. And you might want to manufacture, you know, duplicates, spares in case your drivers crash. And then at the same time as well, in that section, you can also then uh, push resources into researching for next year's technical regulations, which can change slightly year to year. So there will be a kind of natural progression of all our career mode saves. So we won't all be playing the same game by the time you get through a couple of seasons. You might have a very different sort of regulation set and different set of, you know, uh, you know the, the grid in terms of the drivers, how the teams are. And it's all very intuitive. You've got kind of recommended blue thumbs up and you've got green thumbs up to show you the positive uh, changes you've made. And there's also really handy tools on the bottom left there. Show rank on grid, show the car two performance to compare both your cars and also compare your car to other teams. So you can directly see, okay, compared to Alfa Romeo, as, an, as the Alpine manager, where should I improve my car versus Alfa Romeo in comparison to the next couple of races? Scouting drivers and looking at the driver market's also an important thing. And we have F1 down to F3 drivers to look at. So we can look in, send our scout out to find more information about them uh, and get kind of, you know, better, uh, you know, a rounded aspect of, you know, what the rating is versus our drivers or even, you know, what they might be looking at in terms of uh, negotiations and whatnot. So in this example, we're actually looking to replace uh, P P Piastri, our reserve driver, with a different driver here. So we're going to go into negotiations. So you have kind of, you know, a set number of rounds that they may be, uh, you know, able able to negotiate you with if you kind of piss them off with by giving them really low ball offers they're going to be more irked and get less chances to negotiate so there is a kind of back and forth haggling you have to do sometimes or you could just smash out the park and give them all the kind of you know requirements they wanted from the contract and they'll sign with you straight away and obviously a massive part of this game is then also improving your staff your race engineers you can go out and, and hire more staff for you know you can in terms of the, the leading race engineers your head of air Aero, a technical chief, but also the kind of backroom staff, the engineering team, the scouting team, the pit crew, those ones that you don't see by face in the game, but equally you want to add to those teams and you also can train them in terms of the pit crew. You can train the focus of what we want to train them on. The engineering team, we can add to that because that will bring efficiency because when we come to designing parts and manufacturing parts, you're going to have to allocate the number of staff you're actually putting on that task. So you, if you grow your team, obviously then you have more opportunities to actually make things in tandem or make things quicker. In terms of facilities as well, you can improve them, upgrade them or refurbish them if they've been there for a while. So factory, design center, wind tunnel, CFD, suspension simulator and car, pass, uh, car part test center. And we can also add other facilities and other small little tidbits that may not be obviously crucial to making a better car, but are nice to add on for maybe, you know, an, uh, an economic stream or just nice to have for example i think that you can actually put a helipad in there as well but upgrading these facilities will allow us to have more project capacity and therefore obviously make more parts make better parts and make them rapidly quicker and extend our knowledge as a team and that will obviously ultimately get you a better car you've also got the board confidence now they will constantly tell you about how they are after each race you know if that race made them more confident in you if they're happy about it overall how the season's going versus your targets for the season in terms of the standings and the progress there and obviously you have to keep your board happy because you can get fired if you are if you have a significant long period of not making them happy and then you will have to you know put in your p45 and try and find a different team so you can get fired from your team if you do such a shocking job but of course you will know you're doing a bad job because your board of directors will tell you and so there is pressure to actually do well and that will keep you in check the entire time but we're looking through just the standings here and there is a whole world of Formula 1 out there you know other drivers other teams how badly and poorly they're going to be doing and uh, you know look, asking developers at the time when I visited the Frontier HQ there is going to be a, a bit of ebb and flow hopefully if you're playing multiple seasons of this game that you know it will develop into a, a kind of alternate world of Formula 1 compared to your friends uh, gameplay saves other creators that you may watch on YouTube you know you will have a different experience of maybe where drivers have moved or how teams are doing and in in terms of how much, how many seasons you can do, there's actually unlimited. I, I, we asked them and they just said like in terms of simulations they've done, it could just run and run and run. So that has been this first ever look of F1 Manager 2022 gameplay. Um, just, yeah, really 
really impressive. You know, I, I got to play it myself last week. None of this gameplay has been my own gameplay, but eventually when I do get to play it for you guys for a video, I think you'll see how much fun I was having because it was just, you know, to be honest, more than anything, I was taken, taken aback by just how visually stunning it was to say it's a manager game and then on top of the actual gameplay aspect i left frontiers hq after a very brief amount of time playing it just basically wanting more i was just hungry just to learn more about how everything works the game mechanics and learn how i could be a better manager how i could manage the race on the fly a little bit better and that's you know literally perfect a game like that wanting you uh, wanting you to play more of it is just exactly what you want basically so if you have enjoyed this first ever look be sure to hit the like button guys let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're around here then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.